What's up, Gideda friends? It's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Google's Gemini API in order to summarize a PDF file and ask questions on the same file. We are going to build a Streamlit app at the end where we get to select our PDF file, then we extract the text, we ask the model to summarize the data, so this is the summary, and we also get to ask any questions and click on get answer and this is going to call the model and give us the answer we pass over here. And before we jump into this video, let me just say that if you're new to my channel and you're passionate about data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enabling notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the libraries we're gonna need, please pip install any of these libraries that you don't currently have. So we're gonna need the Google Cloud AI platform, we're gonna need the PYMU PDF, we're gonna need the Google Generative AI, the PY PDF 2, the PDF Plumber. Also, I had to upgrade my Google Cloud AI platform. I got an error, I don't remember why, but I had to run this command too. And we will also need to run Streamlit. Next, we will need to initialize and test the Google AI platform client. In order to do this step now, you're gonna need to have an API key. If you don't have an API key, you can follow this link over here in AI Studio, which is Google's AI Studio, and you can create a new key. If you don't have access to the Google AI Studio, which means you're gonna need a Google AI platform first and a project, then you can head over into ChatGPT or any chatbot and ask it how to create an API key in Google's AI platform, and it's gonna give you the steps. So you're gonna to need to create a project first within your Google Cloud console, and then enable the APIs, then create credentials, and then you can actually set up your API key in Google AI Studio. Right, going back now, what I'm doing here is that first I am setting my API key. So I went over into the documentation actually, which is the developer documentation over here. And then under quick start, it gives me the code on how to call my key, which is like this. So I copy paste this. And then in order to test if my API works, I can go over into text generation again copy this this is just an example of the model of how it works so i copy this i paste it over here and then i click run and this is basically first configuring the api key then it's selecting the model gemini 1.5 flash and storing it into model then it's calling the model based on this query over here which is write a very short story about crypto and it's storing it into response and then it's printing the response now, I got an error because I don't have my API key over here. So I'm gonna post the video, run this command, and then comment it out so you can see the story over here. There we go, so I have actually uncommented this. I added my API key, I've run it, it works, and then comment this out so I can rerun it and see that it works. And this is basically giving me a very short story about Bitcoin. So we can be confident that our API key works. Right, moving on, the first function we are going to create now is that we are going to load our PDF file and extract the text from our PDF file. So we are creating this function called extract text from PDF and we are passing the path of the file. So this is actually our file over here. You can see where I call the function. First, we start by setting text to empty and then we call our library PDF Plumber to open the path of the file and the file itself. And then we go through all the pages. So for page in PDF.pages, so it's going to start from page one and it's going to extract the text from the first page, page one now, and it's going to store it into text. And then each time it goes through a new page, it adds the new text to the existing text over here. And then we return the text. So if we want to test it, we run our function and then we call our function on this PDF file over here. And you can see that it extracted all the text from that PDF file. I'm just using a random PDF file from the web, by the way, I can show it to you. So if I open it over here so you can see it, is this, uh, not this one, this one, is this PDF. So I have searched and found this PDF from the internet and I'm just using it for this video. Right, going back now into our code, the next thing we do is that we create our summarize function of the text. 
So this function over here that summarizes the text is basically going to be this button over here in our Streamlit app that takes this extracted text from the file we upload and it summarizes it. So if we go back to our code, what I did is that I have copied the example code from above here that we have copied from the documentation. I have pasted it down here and what I have changed is that instead of saying model.generate and ask a generic question, I ask the question, please summarize the following text and I pass my text. This text is going to be this text over here. And then we just return the response.text, which is basically the response, the answer of the function. So if I run this and then I run my function, the summary on our text, which is what we pass in the function, we can see that this is giving us a summary of our text. The next function we are going to create is basically asking questions on that text. So again, it's a copy paste. So I copy this, I paste it down here. I also pass a question in my function, not just the text. And I say, please answer the following question based on the provided text. And the following question is going to be the question over here, the question that we pass. And the text is going to be the text that we extracted on the previous step. So if I run this function too, and then I ask the question down here, what is the theme of this text? We can see that we get this answer that says the theme of this text is the emergence of crypto, etc, etc. So you can see how easy Google made it for us to call their model and use their model. It's actually a lot cleaner, I would say, versus, let's say, Gen AI's API, how we call the chat completions versus this code. It's a lot cleaner and a lot less code to do the same thing. And just to show you what this question answer function is going to answer is basically going to be this button over here, the get answer, where we get to ask any question. And this is going to go through our PDF, our extracted text, and it's going to try and answer this question over here. Right, going back, the next step I have is that I am basically putting everything together. I need everything in one cell because if we are going to use a Streamlit app, we need to convert this file into a .py file, so everything has to work in one cell, let's say, before we translate it into a .py file. So, we start by setting our environment, which was the first step we've done. I'm going to comment this out because my code is not going to work if I run it, but here is where you paste your API key. Then we have our first function, we have explained the extract text, then we have our second function, which is the summarize the text. Then we have our third function, which is the question on the text. Then we pass the location of our file over here. Then we call our extracted text from PDF function. Then we call our summary function. And then we call our question function. And if I run this, you can see that everything works fine in one cell. There we go, you can see first we get the summary and then we should also get the answer which is the what are the main points discussed in this document and we get the main points down here. And if you actually spend some time to read this, the model does a very good job in answering both the summary and the question pass over here. Right, and the last thing we have to do is to create our Streamlit app which is this app over here. To do this, I had to shuffle our code a bit in order to make it work, but I'm going to explain exactly what we've done over here. So first we start with importing all of our libraries that we have used before, plus this library over here from PIL import image because we need to use this image over here. Then we start by setting our API key. Again, I have commented this out because my code is going to fail, but over here you have to paste your API key. So I'm going to run this again. Then we have our extracted text from PDF function is exactly the same. Then we have the summarize text function. However, I have also added a try and expect exception as error. We print the error. So we can see the error in case this summarize text fails. And the reason I added this is because a lot of the times we are passing a PDF that has a lot more tokens than the model can manage. So I think it's good to print the error instead of crash the whole app and not see the error. 
Then I have added the question asking function we created. Again, I have added the try and accept print the error. So we can see the error in case this function fails. And then we create a new function called main. In this main function now, we are going to add our streamlit app. So we start by saying st.title and this title over here is going to be our title over here. Then I have the image. So what I'm doing is that I'm loading this AI pick five image I have over here, this one over here. And this image is basically this image we see over here. Right, going back, then I am creating this st.file uploader and I'm calling it upload a PDF file. This streamlit.file uploader is basically this section over here that we are going to select our PDF so we can extract the text and then use our models on this PDF. Right, the next step now is that I'm saying if there is an uploaded file, then we need to run the extract text from PDF function and this is going to extract all the text from the PDF we have just uploaded. Then I am limiting the characters of this text because in the next step we are going to actually display this text because I don't want to display more than 500 characters over here. I just want to see the first 500 characters. That's why I'm limiting the text. And then what I'm doing is that I'm saying st.subheader extracted text. This is the subheader over here, extracted text. And then text from PDF, I'm actually passing the display text, which is the limited text. And this is the text of the PDF, the first 500 characters. Then we are adding a button called get summary. So this st.button is this button over here. And I'm saying if we actually click this button, then I want to run the summarize text function. And as we have explained, this summarize text function is going to take this text we have just loaded and it's going to create a summary. So if I click it now, you should be able to see it. There we go. You can see the summary it created. And it looks a lot nicer actually in this UI over the Jupyter Notebook UI. Going back, the last thing we do is that we are adding this st.text input, which is this text input over here, you see, that we are going to type in our question so we can ask a question on our text. And if I go back, what I'm saying over here is that if we do click this st.button, then I have another if. If there is a question, then I want to run the question text function we have just created above and I want to write the answer, so display the answer. Else, if there is no question, so as soon as we open the app, I wanted to say, please enter a question to get an answer. And if you run this now for the first time, so what I did is that I posted a video and commented this out, I added my key so I can run it and see what it says below. It says, to view this template app on browser, run it with the following command. However, I couldn't get this to work from the Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to use Visual Studio Code in order to deploy this app. So the steps now is that we have to create a new file now, which is going to be a Python file, a .py file. We are going to name this as uh, Gemini App 2 and then click rename. And then we are going to copy and paste all of this code that actually works in one cell. So I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it over here like this. And then we are going to click file, save all. So we save this file. Next, I'm going to copy and paste this file into the location that I want this file to be. So usually when you do this, it's going to be under your uh, users and then your main user. And then this is where my app was created. So I'm going to cut it from here and I'm going to put it in this folder over here. A sec. There you go. And then I'm going to use Visual Studio Code in order to open that file. So I actually have Visual Studio Code open, which is over here. And then the file we have just created is called Gemini underscore app to dot pi file. And this is the code over here. So it's exactly the same as the code we have in Jupyter Notebook. The only difference for you is that you are going to have your API key over here. 
You can actually do this following a different process. You can create a new .py file over here, or you can just convert your Jupyter Notebook Python file into a .py file over here. However, we are not going to do that. We are going to stay with this file we have just created over here. Now, to deploy this app, what we have to do is that, let me remove this, we have to create a new command prompt. And in this command prompt, we have to say streamlit run and then the name of our file. However, because I don't have my API key, I'm going to pause the video, add my API key over here and then come back. Right, I have added my API key. So if I scroll up, I have my API key over there. So what I'm going to do now, as I said, uh, I need to have a new command prompt. I'm just going to create a new one again. And here we can say streamlit run and then the name of our file i'm just going to get the name from over here is this gemini app 2 copy go back paste it over here click oh is this is not going to work we need to have the dot pi at the end don't forget that there we go you can see this is going to open a new window which is going to be our app i'm just going to put it next to our previous app there we go as you can see, it's pretty much the same up until now. Then we want to browse and then select a PDF file. So I'm going to select the same file. As you can see, as soon as you select it, we see the extracted text, the first 500 characters. Then we click on Get Summary. And straight away, we can see an error occurred. The error says, uh, generated model to generate content got an unexpected keyword argument timeout. That's weird because the code worked over here with the timeout. So I'm not sure what the issue is, but basically it says that it doesn't recognize this timeout. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back into the Visual Studio code and I'm going to remove this timeout. Actually it was 120. I've tried 220. It still didn't work. So now I'm just going to remove it. I'm going to click File, Save, and then I'm going to go back into our app over here and I'm going to click rerun and then get summary. It's running now, there we go, now it worked. So it gave us our summary, which was pretty much the same summary as before. And now we can ask the question, let's say, write an email with the top three points of this text, uh, email, click uh, get answer, enter doesn't work. It's running now, there we go, hi, and then the recipient name. I want to share with you the three most interesting predictions from Bitwise. So it's basically summarizing our PDF into three points. It writes the email so we can copy and paste it straight away into our email. Right, this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you now know how to use Google's API for Gemini and then call the model on your PDFs. Uh, this is the third model we are testing in this series of videos. We actually have one for Gemini now. We have one for ChatGPT through OpenAI API, which again does the same thing. And we also have another one using Hugging Space APIs. And this model, I think, is using BERT and T5 from Google. These are local models from the previous video. And I'm actually planning to run a few more models. And then we're going to put them all together and compare them and see the pros and cons of each model. Right. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions or any specific model you want me to test, then please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.